Hey everyone, Shadow here, what is up? Happy March! Uh, haven't done a video for a while because this and this has consumed my life. But since it is March, set 4 will be coming out soon, so let's just do a deck profile and wrap up our set 3 uh, decks before the next set comes out. So starting off as our main character, we have the lovely Azura, we have one copy of the level 1, and then four copies of the white level 4, and three copies of the black level 3. Azura as the main character has some good and downsides to it. So looking at the level 1, of course she only has 30 attack, meaning she's a very weak main character. Starting off with a card that has 30 attacks means you're gonna, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage early on, so it is really, really important to class change as soon as possible. And how do you do that? By using the level 4s, uh, the whites, and the black ones, and that's why we're using 7 copies of the class change forms, because you want to draw into those as soon as possible. But wait, you may ask, uh, those aren't class changes, those are just level ups, right? But no, uh, if you read the effects of Azura, which I'm sure most of you know by now, you can class change her with a promotional cost of 2 if you have both a one, uh, one white card and one black card in your bond area. Which is a really early time to class change, which is a great thing. The white one is better, and that's why we're using 4 copies of her. She's more versatile, and uh, even though the black one is pretty good, uh, she can do some really nice destruction with uh, Dragonstone cards, making your opponent discard, but that's kind of situational, so... Uh, but we're still using three copies of her just so we can get uh, her class change going because it's really important early on. If you guys want to check out the translations, I will leave a link for the wikia in the description below and you can check out all the translations for yourself. And this deck is mainly based around abusing the white aquas effect of revealing the top cards of your deck and changing the orders and sending out any of the ones you don't want to uh, the discard pile. So that's what this deck is kind of based around. So the way I set it up is that the white cards in this deck are going to be mainly used for support, while the black cards are going to be used for damage. So right there is the lineup for our white supports. We have some archers, some flyers, um, just mainly very aggressive play in this deck. You want to be doing a lot of damage in one turn, and I'll be showing you how to do that in a second. But in order for you to do that, you're going to need all these really strong supports. So we got some 30 and 40 supports right here. So the first card I want to talk about is Silas. We're using two copies of him. His first ability allows you to unify your field, making both black making black units be also considered as white units. And uh, this allows you to use supports of the um, the black units to have the supports that the white units can have. For example, a Corin. If you mill a Corin, uh, it usually only applies for white units if you mill the white Corin. But his effect allows you to count that card on the field as a white unit as well, so which it just helps with your strong pushes and also this deck runs a lot of Corins, which I'll be showing you in a second, so having a lot of Corins, his effect to give himself a boost whenever he mills one is going to happen pretty often, especially with those uh, checks that you're going to have using Azura's effect. God it sounds weird to call her Azura. So in my build of this deck, we are using two copies of the level 4 Dark Corin and uh, the level 1 Dark Corin, we're using four copies as well. So the level 1 is going to be mainly for the mills, and also it's really strong early game because usually you're going to try to have that black and white uh, bond card in your bond area. So that way Corrin's going to gain that uh, 10 attack and it's going to make him 50 base early on, which is going to be pretty important since your Azura is probably not going to be doing too much damage. The uh, black Corrin is going to be there for mainly for troublesome cards that you can't destroy by battle because they're in the back row or your opponent's protecting them somehow. So. That's what that's going to be for. You're not going to use it too often, but it's kind of cool to have a corn name there. But our true MVP of this deck is going to be the white female Corin. So this card is actually pretty expensive. It was really high at one point. I'm not sure if it's uh, went down by now, but yeah, this card is really expensive, especially for us in the US. Uh, so we're using four copies of the level four and four copies of level one. As always, the level one is going to be there for the support. You want to be doing a lot of damage early on. Uh, so that's what she's going to be there for, and uh, also you can use it for helping protect your level 4 Corrin, because you want to keep her on the field as long as possible and abuse her great effect whenever you can. So now what her effect does is something that is really amazing and I'm surprised it came out already. So using her effect, you can flip two bonds and tap her and bring back a, a unit that's cost 3 or lower. So a unit that's cost 3 or lower in this deck are these ones that I laid out right here. 
So depending on what you want and how brave you are, or if you're willing to use Azura's effect, you can either bring out usually Gunther or Silas. So bring out these two, uh, let's just say we're gonna bring out Silas. So having an Azura on the field while you do this, right, you're gonna have three cards on the field now, and that's gonna be pretty strong, and her effect, if you bring back a black unit, and that's why I said that most of these cards in this deck, the cards that are gonna be doing damage are gonna be the black units, because if you bring back a black unit with her effect, you can untap her. So right now, instantly, with just her effect, and having your main character on the field, you're gonna have three cards that are around 70 base attack. But now you're like, which one should I bring back when I have the opportunity to bring back to choose from all four of them? So usually I choose Gunther if I want to do uh, guaranteed damage because he's going to be 70 base attack. You can bring out Hinoka if you need range damage for any reason or if you need to get something back. It's a pretty good effect. Uh, her effect also allows you to get back Azura from your discard piles um, if you have a weaker one on the field because sometimes you don't draw her and that's going to be your main way to get the, your class change Azuras out. So that's why she's there. Uh, Cyrus, if you're gonna use Azura's effect this turn, if you're gonna try to mill, uh, or make it so you have a Corrin that you're gonna mill, Cyrus is pretty good for that. He's only 10 weaker than Gunther, so sometimes it's worth the risk anyway. And then if you have a lot of bond space down, I think it's 6, then he'll, um, Kana will gain attack. So, uh, that's when you would bring him out. And I'm gonna see, talk about how much, how many copies of each of those I'm gonna be running right now. So as I showed you before, we are running two copies of Silas, but we are running three copies of Gunther, uh, t three, two copies of Hinoka, and one copy of Kana. Using one copy of Kana doesn't, uh, makes it so you don't dead draw him early on because he's only good late game, really. And finishing things off, we have three copies of Ryoma. With Azura's effect, you can change what you have on the top of your deck and what you want to mill. So having Ryoma there, uh, you can change what you which effect you need to go off. So we're, uh, we're using him and also he's 30 support. Uh, he's the only 30 support black unit we have in this deck at the moment. If you want, there's some other ones you can run, but we're just going to use him. And then we're, uh, we have one copy of Flora. You only really need one copy. Her evasive effect is really good, but you can only use it once per game. So it's kind of useless to use too many copies. So one to two is mainly what you want to use. So here's just a quick overview of the layout of the deck if you want to take a final look of it all together. There are a lot of ways to build a deck with Azura as your main character, all being sort of aggressive, some using uh, Dark Mages and their uh, milling effect that discards cards from your opponent's hand, uh, this one of using archers and high support flyers in order to do a lot of damage. You can really choose whatever you want, but I chose to make mine around Corrin. I know it might not be the most competitive build. But it's definitely kind of cool, and since March and Revelations is coming out, it's a little tribute to that. I'm trying to finish Conquest right now. So stressful. Okay, guys, so happy March. This is my deck, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.